Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about, yep, that's right, another performance optimization in Godot. If you've been in the game dev space for a while, you might have heard of something called object pooling. If you're working on a bullet hell game or any game with a lot of nodes, you definitely want to know about this optimization technique. Object pooling is conserving a pool of objects to avoid the expensive task of destroying objects or loading in new ones in quick succession. To avoid instantiating and freeing all the time and tanking the performance of your game, you can just repurpose objects you have reserved in your object pool to act as if they were newly instantiated ones. But wait, that's it? How is that faster? Well, when your game objects are already stored in a pool in memory, you completely bypass having to spend CPU time allocating and freeing memory. For those using a language like C-sharp, skipping memory allocation means you trigger the garbage collector less often and avoid the lag spikes that come with using it too much. When you pool objects, your game's memory tends to be less fragmented since chunks of memory are created and destroyed less often. Less fragmented memory means it's quicker for the engine to figure out where in your PC's RAM to put your game objects. You also only have to initialize your objects a single time, only when they are added to memory the first time. There's usually a bit of initialization needed when pulling an object back out of the pool. That is typically much less than normal. For example, you might have a pool filled with several dead enemy objects and have to reset their health to its max health after pulling it from the pool. These advantages are pretty great, but it's always good to be sure your use case is valid before spending time implementing this. So when exactly should I use object pooling? Well, here's a few things I think you'll want to ask yourself. Does your project have a lot of objects that are added and removed frequently? It might make sense if you're running into performance issues in, say, a shooter game with a minigun that needs to shoot 2,000 bullets a second. Do you get lag spikes when several objects are spawned or removed at once in your game? You might run into issues with, say, an AoE ability that wipes out a large swath of enemies at once, or a chest that drops hundreds or thousands of independent item drops all at once. Do you have memory limitations? Because pooling is a nice way to restrict how much memory is used by certain aspects of your game. This can help avoid running out of memory while your game runs if you limit how many objects can sit in the pool at once. All that being said, a good rule of thumb is to only turn to object pooling if you run into issues with performance like this. It adds complexity to your project, so it might not be worth the extra effort in some cases. I'd personally only set it up preemptively if I knew my game was going to be a chaotic one, like a bullet hell. But what the heck, dude? I heard Godot doesn't even need pooling. Like, what's the point of this video? Oh my god. Yeah, I have heard it said that Godot doesn't need object pooling. That it already caches its objects after they are loaded the first time. Even, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher this, Juan Lenitsky, the creator of Godot, spoke about this a while back. He said, A lot of new Godot users ask about object pooling. You don't need to do that in Godot because allocating, freeing scenes and classes is fast and there's no garbage collector in GDScript or Godot. I wonder how we could best uneducate new Godot users about this practice. What he says is a little misleading if you ask me. Loading in the same scene a second time will run faster because of caching. GDScript doesn't use a garbage collector and whatnot. But actually going in and testing pooling out in a project shows that there are still performance games available from pooling objects and scenes like this one. Here you can see we have two identical projects, each spawning 3,000 bullets per second except one uses object pooling. You can see there's still a clear performance advantage when using object pooling. Note that these bullets are just simple area 2Ds with sprites. I actually had a performance decrease when using character body 2Ds for the bullets with object pooling. So definitely experiment with different setups if you decide to try this approach. That being said, Godot does a pretty good job at making object pooling less of a necessity. This example, using GDScript and Godot, is pretty mild compared to the FPS that can be gained in different setups, like if you use garbage collected languages and other engines. Understanding how performance optimizations like object pooling work can be a tricky concept to get a grasp on without a strong computer science background, but thankfully we have Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video, to help us learn. Brilliant is where you can learn by doing, 
with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is a learning platform with an effective approach to teaching new concepts. Each expert-crafted lesson is packed full of highly interactive problem-solving content that lets you explore and experiment with the course's materials, a method proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lectures. I've personally been doing Brilliant's programming and computer science learning path, and I've been very impressed with the lessons so far. From looking at the courses, it's obvious to me that there are learning materials for a wide range of subjects, covering all skill levels. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash deepdivedev, or scan the QR code on screen. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's dive into the code making this work. Here's our little object pool scene. Implementing this, we want to track objects in the pool and keep them in the tree in a disabled state. We keep them from interfering with our active objects and costing us performance by setting the process or physics process to false when they are pooled. Here's a simple script showing what this might look like for you. You can see up at the top, we have an array to track our pooled objects. An add to pool function where we disable the object and add it to the array. And finally, a pull from pool function, which just does the opposite of add to pool. It removes the object from the array and gets it all set up for use. Odds are you'll probably have some other properties you'll want to set up when pulling from the pool, like setting the HP back to max or setting the position. But believe it or not, that's pretty much all you need to get a really basic object pool set up in Godot. It's really fairly simple to set up one of these in your Godot project. I hope this video is helpful for y'all. If you haven't already, please take a second to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I do a variety of game dev content like dev logs or game jams on top of these Godot help videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.